Welcome, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with Strategic Command World War II World at War. They really like their long titles, don't they? Okay, um, this is um, a development on from Strategic Command World War II War in Europe, but this has taken it global. Um, I've had a lot of fun with the War in Europe version, so we're going to um, look at setting up and opening moves here. So um, you can see the different options, um, play by email, online, hot seat, that kind of thing. We're just going to be doing single player. And different starting points, we're going to do the um, 1939 campaign. Um, again, I like to play the Axis. Um, two main reasons, I guess we could say. Um, not just in this game, but just generally. Um, one, they were the driver, particularly Germany, particularly in Europe. Japan was in Asia, but even there it was still, quite honestly, a sideshow. But Germany was the driver for the action in World War II everything else everybody else was just a reaction to what germany was doing including italy so um you know there's a lot of challenges playing you know the allies the french trying to trying to defend against it the other element is the what if element sure you can do what if france did something different could they have won the battle of france if you will and radically change what World War II was. But we know how sort of the the US, the Allies, whatever you want to call it, can win the war. It's more how could the Axis have won? Um, and we can look at this. We're going to continue with intermediate difficulty. Um, and so we're going to look at that. Okay. Um, Many of you may prefer this view, where you have the models um, for naval and air, um, but I personally like the old style um, counters. Just so used to it, um, goes back. It's just sort of a natural thing to me. We'll take a look at advanced settings. I don't think I've I have played um, sort of the start of this a couple of times, just to sort of get the feel again. It's been a while since I was playing um, more in Europe. But we want to look here just briefly. This is one of the things I love about what they've done is here. They have all kinds of um, scripts. And we'll bring up another game, Hearts of Iron. Hearts of Iron is trying to do everything without scripts. And with sort of um, high level. Um, you can see all of the different options. 22 unit um pages of unit options here um, trying to do everything with sort of advanced AI and it's not going so well in my opinion it's not maybe well no it's bad sorry it is bad um, but I'm not saying somebody's doing better this is doing it different so I like this and I do believe um, I haven't really got into the mods for this game, but I do believe there are script mods and things like that, and which um, can make the game very replayable. So if you sort of learn what the, the standard sort of scripts are, you can bring in other options. Okay, so we're gonna start this. German has invaded Poland. German troops. That's the start of the war in Europe. But as we see, it's already been going on in Asia, particularly in China, with the Japanese invasion. Winning the war in China, we have invested a great deal of our effort um, in our war with China, but a decisive victory eludes us. 
Nanning is the last major Chinese port receiving foreign aid, including supplies from the U.S. Should we gain control of Nanning, China may no longer be able to continue to resist us and victory could be within our grasp. Um, capture Nanning as soon as possible. Okay. Those of you who routinely watch my channel know that I like to give um, historical commentary while playing. In my opinion, the main reason China was unable to get a decisive victory is it wasn't looking for one. It had no intentions um, at the start of the war with China. Um, and the Japanese government did not start the war with China. It was the Japanese army in Manchuria on its own decided to sort of poke and it was poking at for some time before um, poking at China uh, the Marco Polo Bridge incident was just uh, maybe a little more major than some of them but just another incident there they wanted to grab off a piece of Chinese territory like they had done earlier with uh, Manchuria and they sort of had been doing like I was saying, small actions before, grab off a chunk of territory and then sign a peace treaty, ceasefire, something like that, to give some years of pause to organize up their new territory and then more than likely go for another short war. Do it in, yeah, how do you eat it? Um, an elephant? One bite at a time. That was Japan's. Um, if you will, or the, the army in Manchuria, or Manchukuo, um, the Kuomintang, I think I have that right, sorry if I don't, um, idea or goal. That was not Chiang Kai-shek. Chiang Kai-shek um, realized that that was what was happening, and realized that if he signed a peace agreement, or a ceasefire, or whatever with them, that that would only continue to encourage them and they would continue to take chunk after chunk in easily digestible pieces. So he refused multiple times um, for Japan's serious attempts at um, concluding the war in one facet or, facet or another with China. So that is why, and it, the Japanese were slow to realize this. Now by 1939, they had more or less realized this, but um, there was still much confusion at, in the high levels of the Japanese government. Japanese governments were often lasting less than um, six months. Um, people often see Japan as a totalitarian state. It wasn't. Um, it was a very fractured state. Sure, there was this... Um, reverence for the emperor but that did not mean um, there was uh, significant um, cohesion in government or control um, within the um, political system it wasn't until well I think it was in maybe mid or late 1940 that Tojo becomes um, Minister of War I think that's what they called it at the time um, and wasn't until 41, and again, mid or late 41, I believe, that he becomes basically prime minister as well. He hold, he ends up holding, I think it was maybe four. One of them was, uh, uh, you know, minister of education. Of course, he didn't run the education department. It was the whoever the assistant minister was, but he had um, the power grab. And it was really only um, him consolidating control politically within the government in um, mid to late 41. Remember, it's basically at the end of 41 um, that they go to war with the U.S. And it's only in that time period do they really start move into a more totalitarian um, political system. And so um, that needs to be understood about Japan and why they weren't able to just defeat China because they didn't have a plan to. Um, yeah. Okay, strategic advice. Um, 
there are in my in my opinion um significant problems with um strategic command um in sort of a natural sense so they um i think do a good job at trying to sort of organize um events or situations to simulate history one of them is say for um an event that basically uh, Mike or basically handles the invasion of Norway because the way the game is set up in the time frame allotted it isn't um, a, a practical possibility to do an invasion of Norway effectively as historically um, done and that is on several fronts but the main one is the scale of of the action and we'll get into that some more but this is giving you some hints um to do with stuff to avoid war with the uk and usa the foreign ministry reports that both the uk and usa are preparing to defend um all areas under their influence throughout asia and the pacific be aware also sending naval units near Hawaii, Alaska, or North America will increase U.S. mobilization, avoiding war with the Soviet Union. Intelligence reports that Stalin may attack Manchuria should our presence there appear weak. Recommendation to prevent USSR from um, swinging towards the Allies. Um, keep units in um, Manchuoli. Um, Tsistar? Uh, Kaimazu? Uh, Yenkai, Harbin, and uh, Sinkang, Hank, Haysing. Okay, to avoid war with USA and the British for as long as possible. Okay, we will click to dismiss this. Now, this is one thing um, I, I'm taking seriously. Basically, they named, um, don't know if um, they named this city up here, but they named basically all of these um uh cities up here so we want to keep units here to keep um the soviet union off our backs now i like i say i haven't gotten very far in this game in my sort of um gearing up for this but my thought was and i think it's um quite capable they don't say which units or what kind of units so one thing we will be building are um, garrison units like this to replace um, most if not all of these units up here in um, Manchukuo now one of the things I want or that you need to very much understand early on and this is sort of one of the reasons I like um, this format of counters the X's are infantry units it's um, fairly old map convention style but the either the three X's across the top or the sort of um, uh, darker shade in the counter are cores the four X's or the lighter shade are armies Oh, come on. Can't we zoom in over there? Okay. Yes, we could click on the mini map. And so you can see here the darker grays, these are cores. These are armies. They're facing, that's an army. That's a core. That is really important to understand the size of these units. So, a say, a five strength core versus a five strength army are radically different. And now here we're getting down into basically brigades um, uh, with a single X. I believe brigades are single X. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Because divisions are um, two, I think. And so those are, are relatively smaller. So we have to look at that. Okay. Um, we have one unit on transports already, so um, we want to get him somewhere. Um, let's move this um, command HQ up to there, which will get us a little better. That's our objective. I do know from 
already playing it, that that is um, there is somebody there. So we don't want to just rush into there. So we'll come up here, enemy contact. We can help. Well, they attacked us, but we didn't want to do too badly. Now that we have that, um, we now have the port. So next turn, we're going to um, get these guys off the ships. And so we're looking at um, dealing with the Chinese here. Another thing that I, well, we'll deal with that in a moment. Um, we're going to connect up some of these territories by coming down here. I do know there is a possibility of an outbreak of partisan activity, so we're going to move these guys here and this core HQ there. Now we have to look at, um, well, we want to put pressure on China. We want to, if we just attack in various places, we will do some damage. This would do more damage to us. But I think here is a good place where we can, these two armies can push on that core. And take a little damage, yes. Um, We'll stay right where we are. Um, if you move them, you're going to lose Canton, and it'll be sort of hard to take that back. So we want to hold that. And as I said before, we want to um, replace the units up here. So let's come do purchase. I don't like the term purchase. I know they use it. I would use produce though they do have the production. Um, this is the production schedule. You see, click on each country to see. Um, this is January, February, but it can have different years. Um, be aware of like 42 August. Um, these are already sort of prepaid, pre-established pre um, units that are coming. Um, just so that you know. So that you need to make sure you click on the right country because that's we're going to be doing this. We have a total of 150 MPP and we're going to buy um, two um, uh, garrison units that we can see October down here 39 the reason I didn't one of the reasons I didn't buy three because I wanted to put this um, core on the ships which is going to cost us 25 MPP and now that that's there we're going to come down to here and they're going to get off the boat and secure more territory for us and um, yeah I guess we'll move this there uh, Units have zones of control or influence, if you will. So since there, this has, I think, a one um, hex uh, zone of control, but so does this. So you actually have to occupy where it's conflicting, but where it's not, they just sort of grab up the territory. Okay, sort of mentioning that. Um, just took a look before starting this episode at some of my... Um, uh, war in Europe version of this game and sort of testing it out and playing it I was sort of realizing it and I wanted to confirm it I don't like what they've done here with the map um, they've reduced or is it increased I get confused the scale of the game for the map Nancy the city of Nancy in war in Europe was three provinces away from the German border instead of two. Luxembourg was two, well, two hexes, I should say, um, big. And on similarly with that, with um, not sure exactly how they've redone units, if at all, but it's still the same sort of um, army and core scales. 
to me, and I'm sure they've play tested this, but to me, by making the map smaller, making it tighter, you're um, giving less room um, for maneuver, for flanking, for whatever you want to do. Now you have to, with this game, um, anyways, decide do you want to have particularly um, core assets or um, army assets. Army, you know, are big, but they um, only, you know, occupy one province with their zone of control. So do you, would you rather have um, more um, cores spread out? And this make this to me seems to make it more of a I don't know World War One game. Now I know they have moved it into globally, um, which would make even more provinces. And there may be other issues I'm not aware of that are that are limitations in that regard. Um, but it just it's a it's a disappointment I have. It's it's not like a um, major problem. Now, we want to get our submarines out into the Atlantic. Ah, oh, there's a battleship. We are not technically yet at war. why we didn't run into that with Britain yet, but we will be ever so shortly. Um, yeah, we'll come up to here. So we want to get out there. Now we also have, as we can zoom out and see, we have some units that are already out here. This is the Deutschland Heavy Cruiser, and uh, this is the Admiral Graf Spee. Okay, so let's come down here and sit on the supply line. Again, it's not yet an enemy supply line. Um, we're just going to keep sitting on that supply line because we're not yet at war, but we will be soon. All right, so we've done the naval moves. Now, um, one thing to consider with, and these have, I think they're called action points. Basically, yeah, you can see down there, action points. Um, basically, most armor, and I... Um, can attack twice in a turn, so keep that in mind. Um, we're going to try to create a pocket here. Uh, okay, well, now we're going to come up. Okay, so these guys are going to come here, occupy that fortified city, and there we go. That sort of pockets them to isolate them from supply. This game does most assuredly have a supply element, so that won't go too favorably for us. Tactical bombers, uh, do we want to use them there or? I think we'll just continue our advance here. Okay, not as good as result as I was hoping, but. That hurt a bit. And we're going to come in here and put the squeeze on them from that direction as well. So 
I think we will head this way. Um, we're gonna leave that town unoccupied for the, well. So I like what they've done here. Um, is that the Sar land actually, um, or this part of the Sar, uh, was outside of the west wall. Um, that is why there was the Sar offensive that um, France did, because there was no west wall defenses there. It was just an impractica impracticality of defending it. Um, these units will get weaker once they lose supply effectively. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, the only other people that have any real ability, um, MPP right now to purchase anything are the Italians and, um, I don't think I'm going to use any of their points up. We can see down here, there is, um, an Italian garrison set up here as well. So we have that, and if you are a player of the War in Europe version of this game, you have to realize that you no longer just have um, boxes sort of at, at the edge that um, represent you know supply coming from certain places. You have to actually control all of this stuff. All right, so... Let's end the turn. Moderately good operation. Do you really want to end this turn? Yes. Okay, Führerhaupt Quartos. Lieutenant General Kurt Student's 7th Flieger Division is partially formed and trained unit of paratroopers. Despite its incompleteness, it could be used in the latter stages of the invasion or early attack on France. We could, alternatively, we could allow it to complete its training in which case it will deploy at full strength at the end of this year. Um, I don't have a need for the Flieger Division right now, so we're going to, if you say yes, 50, that no, previous have been assigned to complete. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to say no, we're going to get it fully completed. Okay, Foreign Minister, um, Gaian Gra uh, Graziano Ciano, our second corps is nearly mobilized and ready for deployment. If you wish, it could be sent to reinforce our forces in Abyssinia at the cost of 30 MPP. Given the difficulty of reinforcing our position in East Africa, the events of war with UK, this might be a good option. Alternatively, the corps can be deployed in Naples uh, for service in Europe or North Africa. The decision depends on what the future strategy would be. Um, yeah, I guess we will um, send the second corps to Abbas Abadaba. Canada declares war on Germany. New Zealand does as well. United Kingdom also does. France does. Seems like a little out of war order, but... Alright, okay, the Kriegsmarine is confident that um, protracted naval effort against the British Empire will bring about event, uh, bring about their eventual withdrawal from the war. We can target not only convoy sailing directly to the UK, but also some enemy ports and other coastal areas of importance to the Canadian economy. Recommend send U-boats and surface raiders to target all convoys leading to the UK. Okay, and we can see we're getting some MPP from Norway and Sweden for that. Um, Italy and the miners um, sending off not as much because we're sending off the core to Abyssinia and Japan is collecting a bunch also from the Dutch East Indies not that we control it but that um, we do have um, commercial ties and resources coming from there <laughs>
It is still thinking. For all that I and many others complain about the AI of Hearts of Iron, they're, um, they have to make it seem very seamless um, to do that. Red Army begins to cross the border into Poland. Polish morale plummets as news spreads of the Red Army. British Viceroy of India declares war on Germany. Allies send supplies to China via the Hanoi Kunming Railway. Australia is in it now, too. Axis Raiders destruct um, convoys. These have turned red now that they are enemy supply routes. Okay, that's just a summary of that, and they lost. 13 MPP. Now that Canada, Australia, New Zealand have been at war, it is imperative we target not only critical supply convoys, but also enemy ports on their right. Um, recommend surface raiders. Yes, we already sort of have that for Canada. High Command has commissioned General Falkenhurst to study a possible invasion and occupation of Denmark and Norway. In April 1940, he will present his plans for Operation Westerbung in March 40, as well as the costs for the invasion and occupation if you decide to carry through with the invasion prior to this date be sure to move units quickly to occupy okay um okay communist in yunnan uh open conflict with mao's communists may be avoided at least for some time if we do not advance close to their territory communist china has 60 percent chance of turning uh, a return of swinging um towards the allies if the ally axis are within two hexes of Xi'an, Lanchao, or Xi'an, Lanchao, and Chongqing, or three hexes of Yinan. Occupation only advanced towards Xi'an, if you're ready to fight. Okay, so two hexes for those three cities, and three for Yinan. Okay, so, um, so we don't want to move any closer than here, um, we don't two three here so um well yes they mean yinan the the capital not this sort of territory i guess so we want to stay out from here um not get closer than two to here or the other one was chunky or and chow i think okay so we sort of want to stay um want to be moving into the south at least at first here um, so that is an important consideration. Now we actually have an army here. Um, But we can move this way. Well, I'd like to use the army take Nanning, um, not just sit on Canton with it. I can do that with a core, I think, effectively. Okay. Um, they're going to come there to su suppress um, some partisan activity. pressure here. Um, 
Yeah, we'll move forward. Now, Japan has a lot more MPP, so let's come over here and... Um, let's grab three more garrisons worth of that. So we can see that that will be coming later in October here on the 29th. And that will be useful. So I think that's it for China and Asia. Okay, well, they have not really cut us off here, but um, they have made this connection a little more tenuous for supply. But the key is Warsaw, of course. Wasn't good that we lost that, but oh well. Now I am keeping in mind that Warsaw is the main goal. to move into there. Um, I think this is going to need to wait. Until next turn here. Um, uh, Flanks entirely open. Yeah, we might as well take that down. Okay, that sort of works for me. Here, now, Germany. Well, let's also deal with the naval aspects. So we're going to come, I uh, want to try to avoid British shipping. This is not an enemy supply route yet. Come out here. Okay, that's not yet, but we're gonna we're gonna come all the way down here. That was sort of a dangerous move. Hopefully that South Africa will join the war soon and we can start cutting off supplies from there. Now back to production for Germany. Um well let's we can look also, um, no, we can't close, we're going to close this. The other important elements here are research, which cost MPP as well. Um, we can see what each country is currently set up to be researching, so they're maybe making some progress along these lines. Um, we could add to them. 
these do make a significant difference um, the number of um, a different tech um, technologies added to the game or added to your units so keep that in mind and not just spam build huge numbers of units and um, there are various um, events that move countries into your alliance um, or into the enemy's alliance but you have the chance of increasing some of these if you wish um, you can do that like we can look I'm looking for Hungary so there's an 80% chance if we wanted to um, we could invest 50 MPPs to increase it by 5%. I'm not going to do that for um, uh, Hungary or whatever right now. We may, but we will. We would like allies. Just keep those in mind um, that you may want to do that. Now for Germany, um, hmm. if we were to see about. Okay, um, I know I'm going to want at least another garrison force, so we'll purchase that, which is pretty cheap. Mechanized. 220, and you can see it by adding here. Um, that, now that puts us out of our price range, and I would rather have a good um, mechanized division I think these are divisional strength units than um, just having one cheaper so I will, will wait to buy one of those yes I th think we will okay British Expeditionary Force arrives in France Polish morale suffers from battlefield losses and we can see that we're getting um, in various MPP, which is good. None of it's being cut off. And it's thinking we can see down in the corner as well as the circling icon here. Yes, they're fully mobilizing, and yes, you can spend the um, MPP to reinforce um, your units. So China's getting adventurous and pushing against us. Royal Navy occupies ports of Cork and Waterford in Ireland. So now they own those little ports. South Africa declares war on us. Axis Raiders destruct Canadian convoys. Okay, um, they've lost 12 MPP. Not a lot, but so far. None of those submarines have cost us anything, and so um, we're going to try to keep them alive until we can get France in and build some more. Um, at the end of 1940, you will be presented with a proposal to deploy a force to Italy to serve in the Mediterranean. This force will be known as the Africa Corps. It will consist of ground forces and air units capable of fighting British in the theaters. Forming it will cost 500 MPPs. If you'd rather not invest in this as the war progresses, you may wish to consider deploying units to the Mediterranean so that Italy doesn't have to fight alone. Okay. And we have our two garrison forces from Japan. So let's come over here, drop you there, and drop you here. Okay. So, 
we've got that here. Now, Pounding on that unit. This guy's going to come here while he comes here to occupy that. Uh, I think we'll take that risk of moving up to there. Possibility of being cut off, but then we can move around this other way. Until we can get these garrison forces that we're building over to Manchuko, we're going to leave that as it is. Um, there we go. Pounding on them a bit. And here, well... think we're at somewhat of a stalemate for the moment we we're going to see about if we can get Nanning that will help our overall effect and as we free up all these units we'll really be able to push more and back here let's see what we can do with trying to get um, Well, yeah, I knew that wasn't likely to be a really good result. Um, to me, Warsaw seems to be overly well defended, but it's just my my sense of the situation. These guys can come back up here and secure a Warsaw. Um, yeah. I didn't like that, but we can come there. Occupy that, that'll be a little help. Okay, um. We've done remarkably little air use, but. I didn't really want to use it up um, there. Okay, now. Well, let's see if we can hit this convoy line. That's sort of dangerously close to Britain, but we'll try that out. I do like that they have nice weather effects for different regions, as we can see. Well, I can't really tell there. But snow in some places, rain in others, and various things. So they're doing well. Instead of just a general, this is what it is. Okay, um... Come down here, sit on that, and you're already sitting on there. So, hopefully that will disrupt supply to Britain. Okay, now back to the pro... Well, yeah, um... For Japan, um... Well... Got three more garrisons coming. We have two here that we'll be able to put on board ship next turn. So we can free up um, five units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we let's let's build a few more. I think that'll be enough for now. Um, 
that leaves two. Engineers might be very helpful. And so, um, base cost 200, goes up to 220 with improved infantry weapons. And for mobility, we can't go that high. Um, and that is pretty high. I think we'll just grab this. And I will admit, I am not um, the best at some of the nuances of the game. Oh, damn. Um, oh, I'm going to go back to the, well, we're going to end the episode here. I've done that before. Um, been clicked on the wrong, um, country when I did that. I want those garrison units to be, um, uh, Japanese. So I uh, can go back to the auto safe. Um, from there and play on for next episode but you can get you get the idea um, if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel love to see you around more often if you would also give this video a like and of course I love hearing from you what are your thoughts on the game um, please post below um, thanks so much see you next time for more historical gaming <laughs>